Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our virtual open house. My name is Justin Vorbach, and I'm the Associate Director of Enrollment, as well as I'll be your presenter here today. Before we get started, I do have a few housekeeping items for you, starting off with letting you know that this presentation is being recorded, just so that you're aware. Um, please also, you're more than welcome to have your video on during the presentation, um, but be sure to mute your mic until the Q&A section at the end. Um, there will be a Q&A section at the end. However, feel free to use the chat function throughout the duration of the presentation uh, to ask any questions that you have, and we will be sure to answer them. A quick overview of today's program. Uh, we're gonna start off by hearing from one of our faculty members, Tiffany McQuery. And then after that, there'll be about a 30 minute uh, admissions presentation, followed by a virtual campus tour video, and then a Q&A with our line ambassadors and staff. Before we get started, I'd like to introduce everyone on the chat with me today. Um, we're going to go in alphabetical order because it's the easiest, uh, starting off with, actually, we'll start with Dan Pinchard, our Director of Enrollment. Morning, everyone. How about Deborah Seidenstricker, our Adult and Transfer Counselor? Good morning. Then Andy Kirschner, our Athletic Director. Morning, everyone. Brian Bybee, our Athletic Recruiter. Morning, everybody. Thanks for coming. Renee Brown, our Assistant Athletic Director. Good morning, everyone. Tiffany McQuery, our assistant, teacher, assistant Teaching Professor in English. Good morning. Phenomenal. And last but certainly not least, I know we have some line ambassadors on the chat. I see Jake Gasuda. Jake, you want to say hi? Hey, I'm up. <laughs> <laughs> Do we have any other line ambassadors on the chat, Deborah? Not yet. All right. Well, without any further ado, I'd like to hand it over uh, to Tiffany to give a quick overview of welcome. Excellent. Well, thank you so much, Justin. Good morning. I am so excited to welcome you, at least remotely, uh, to Penn State Beaver. As Justin said, my name is Mrs. McCory, and my students call me Mrs. Mack. Um, I'm an assistant teaching professor of English, so if you would like to make Penn State Beaver your home, you may see this face again in either your first year experience class or your rhetoric and composition class, your freshman English, technical writing, business writing, or public speaking class. So it would be delightful to welcome you as, as one of my students in my classroom. But I am a product of Penn State Beaver. Now, I know typically when uh, young folks hear the phrase, back when I was your age, your eyes automatically roll right? I get it. My husband says it to our children all the time, and, and I get to witness that reaction firsthand. But please indulge me this morning, because back when I was your age, and it's okay, Saturday morning, cue the eye roll, I did not have the opportunity to complete my degree at Penn State Beaver because we didn't offer four-year degrees at the campus at that time. So I began my college career at Penn State Beaver and then I changed my campus location to Penn State Erie um, and it was there that I met my husband who after serving in the Navy uh, began his college career and then my husband went on to complete his degree at University Park. And it gives me such great joy to share with you that in the fall, my daughter will begin her college career this fall at Penn State. So we really are a Penn State family. And throughout the rest of the morning, I am confident that our admission staff will share all about Penn State's reputation with you. The extended list of majors we offer, how fantastic our campus and university is. So I'm not going to infringe on their territory, but if you could allow me these next few minutes, somewhat briefly, to talk about my territory, which is the classroom. So one thing I wanna point out is uh, that you could expect a difference in the rate of learning. So it is true that while you are local, um, if you are local rather, you may see some of the same uh, faces, student faces that you saw from high school. But I assure you that the classroom experience will not be the same. So just to, as preparation, gone are the days that you will spend a week or two covering a single chapter, that you'll receive a detailed study guide of terms to memorize and regurgitate on the test, and that you would then take a test on that chapter. Instead, it may be that you cover a chapter or two every class, 
Um, you may not even receive a study guide, and it's not unusual for you to take a test on five to six chapters at a time. Oh, wait, and uh, while you are expected to memorize, the terms, you may not earn credit on the test simply by sharing those definitions. Rather, what you can expect is you will be um, expected to show practical application of those terms. So that's one difference in the classroom that you can expect. Now let's shift a little and talk about the relationships that you may have uh, with your professors. So at Penn State Beaver, you're going to hear repeatedly about the advantages of small classes. And a huge advantage to small classes is that you will get to know your professors and your professors will get to know you. So you're not going to be known by your Penn State user ID. Instead, you're going to be known and addressed by name. So we're gonna to get to know what your abilities and your work ethic, we're going to celebrate you in your successes. In fact, um, before this session started and I saw some of the beautiful images that were um, scrolling across the screen or not scrolling, but you know, moving. Um, so uh, one of them was Fawn and one of our former students uh, who started her career at Penn State Beaver um, and then went on to University Park. She uh, participated in the talent competition of Thon, and I saw pictures of Thon, which is the largest uh, student run philanthropic uh, event raising millions and millions of dollars for cancer. And it was so exciting because we continue to stay in touch, even though she's moved on to University Park and we can still celebrate in her successes as she um, won, I believe it was second or third place this year uh, in the in the talent competition. So we celebrate with you in your successes and we will push you to work harder because our job is to prepare you for the workplace. So we're not gonna allow you to hide behind excuses. Um, you can expect to not be rewarded simply for attending class and completing assignments. And the reason is that's the minimum expectation of all college students. Now. I don't say all of this on a Saturday morning to, to scare you, but I say it to challenge you to come to college with the necessary drive, determination, and motivation you will need to succeed. And when you do, here's my promise to you. Your faculty are going to come along um, beside you. We're going to maintain office hours and, and those are hours set aside each week that we will be available to meet with you um, outside of class to answer any questions you may have about the course material. All faculty provide their email addresses. Some faculty will provide their cell phone numbers. We are available to help you. So because your faculty will get to know you, here's another benefit outside of that of the classroom. We will be able to write letters of recommendation for you for scholarships, awards, study abroad and internship positions, graduate school, employment. In fact, each semester, students who have continued on to one of our other campus locations to complete their degree, they still contact uh, me and, and my peers to write letters of reference for them because they recognize that the faculty at the smaller campus locations, such as Penn State Beaver, we get to know them far better than their faculty at larger campus locations. So that's a real plus to you. All right, now let's do a little shift and talk about some of the exciting things that are going on in the classroom. Um, Two things that I am so excited about. Uh, one is the redesign of learning spaces. So in the fall of 2018, we replaced tables and chairs in one of our classrooms with movable desks and ad added movable whiteboards. And the change in the learning environment without even adding technology was so exciting to witness. Our goal is to create active learning spaces that are more conducive to 21st century learning because we recognize that that how you learn is different than maybe how students learned years ago. So we want to move away from your faculty lecturing throughout the entire class as, as students sit in rows of desks and chairs as a classroom had been designed since the early 1900s. Instead, we want to create an active learning environment. So sure, some lecture content still exists 
in these classrooms, but there has been a shift and some faculty choose to use all of their class time to actually engage with the material that students were assigned to read before class. Oh, and be prepared. Some faculty will expect that you have actually read the assigned readings and will choose to not lecture at all on the content of those readings. Isn't that a sneaky way to hold you accountable for reading? So increasingly, our faculty are using more active learning strategies, things like think, pair, share, give one, get one, note checks, one minute papers, muddiest point, class discussions, peer reviews. We want you to be engaged in the learning process. So because the learning space with movable desks was such a hit, we completely renovated a large classroom in the lower level of the library. <laughs> Unfortunately for me, it was finished at the end of February. Um, and then just to kind of shift your mind back in time, uh, our spring break happened then the first week of full, first full week of March and then quarantine. <laughs> so we, we shifted to remote, remote learning shortly after. So I have not seen the classroom in person, but I believe um, at the end of this uh, open house that there will be a virtual tour and you will be able to see that classroom as part of the virtual tour. So actually you're kind of seeing it as much as I've seen it, but I bet I'm a little more excited about it. Um, so we experimented in that experimented in that classroom with different types of, of tables and chairs and technology. And um, in fact, instead of placing movable whiteboards in that space, the tables themselves are movable whiteboards. <sighs> that blows my mind. I'm so excited to get in that space. And what is so exciting is there are several other renovating plans. Um, underway to positively impact the learning spaces on campus. So these are exciting days at Penn State Beaver. And then just to continue on that note of excitement, in case the excitement wasn't evident um, already, I want to talk about a program that Penn State Beaver initiated that's called EDGE, Experiential Digital Global Engagement. Now, that's a mouthful, but what it is, is it's a type of international virtual exchange that connects students at home with students around the world through technology using a collaborative project. So it's a project-based learning. And Penn State is committed, committed to helping students increase their global awareness, global literacy, global competency, intercultural competency, and global citizenship. In other words, we recognize that we live in a global society and it is likely that you will engage to some extent or another with um, either clients or colleagues from around the world. And we want to help prepare you for the workplace. So one way to prepare students for global engagement is through study abroad. And several of our students have taken advantage of this opportunity. In fact, uh, one recent graduate, Katie Work, one summer before her senior year, she studied abroad in France, Germany, and Italy. It was a whirlwind and she raved about the experience. But we recognize that not all students have the resources to study abroad. So that's the strength of our EDGE program is we're going to bring in to some of the courses that you will complete at the campus that you're already going to take anyway as a requirement for your uh, degree program, the opportunity to collaborate with students over a distance through technology to complete a group project. And as a result of these collaborative projects, you're going to cultivate important skills that you will um, that will have value both professionally and personally in the 21st century. Things like intercultural interaction, project collaboration, distance collaboration, and digital skills. In fact, to date, um, I have delivered three EDGE courses, uh, one in the fall, two in the spring, and my students have delivered uh, PowerPoint, joint PowerPoint presentations with students at the Adava Institute in Israel. They've interviewed peers and, and created a video project uh, comparing food choices and discussing English slang expressions with students at Seiken Sefulin Agrotechnical University in Kazakhstan. Oh, and let me just tell you about that. That was hilarious, by the way. So um, uh, 
in Kazakhstan, they're just trying to introduce English language learning into their curriculum. So they were doing a lesson on English slang expressions. And so our students worked together and, and the Kazakh students gathered what they knew about English slang expressions from um, American radio and American movies. And it was a delightful uh, time of having them share what they thought these expressions meant uh, for our students to share maybe expressions that they had not heard of. Um, for me to learn uh, English current slang that I had never heard of, uh, it was really a fascinating project, but I digress. Um, and then the last opportunity was another of, of my classes worked with students to create a video project with students at Fateki Presidente Prudenti in Sao Paulo, Brazil. And that was fascinating. So while completing this project, and it's usually like a three to four week module, students use Zoom video conferencing, WhatsApp, which is a, a messaging app, Facebook, Slack, and other social media tools. And they de develop these it, it turns into to friendships with students around the world. It is fascinating. So the Edge Experience is an initiative that began at Penn State Beaver, which is so exciting, in the spring of 2018. And we partnered a chemistry class of ours with a chemistry class at the University of Split in Croatia. And since that time, we now have 49 interested faculty from 16 of the 19 Penn State undergraduate campuses with 13 international partner institutions from around the world. And we're still growing, so it is so exciting. There's a lot, as you can tell, uh, to be excited about at our campus and about uh, Penn State University. So I just wanna thank you for the opportunity this morning to be able to share some of my excitement with you. I wish you a fabulous day and I'll turn it over to our admissions team. Thank you so much, Tiffany. I love the overview. Your excitement and enthusiasm always gets me going. So thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. Uh, yes. Uh, before we get going with the presentation, I do have one last housekeeping item for you. Um, if you did not include your last name in your, in your participant name uh, of the chat today, uh, please be sure to check the chat function of Zoom because our director of enrollment is uh, personal messaging you to try to get your last name so that we can check you in uh, for today's program. So without any further ado, let me share my screen and let's get this, uh, this admissions presentation started. So I'd like to start with a top down overview of Penn State. So just that you have a little perspective to go off of. Penn State is one world-class university with over 20 undergraduate campuses scattered throughout the state of Pennsylvania. We offer over 275 majors, over 300 minors, we have 1,200 clubs and activities, 78,000 undergraduate students, and over 100,000 students university-wide, and over 700,000 alumni in our alumni network. That number's even gone up from there. What these numbers mean to you is that Penn State, you can tailor your education to your every single want and need. Uh, no two Penn Staters uh, navigate the Penn State system the same way, and you have the ability to truly find your fit and make your college experience what you want it to be. Now, when I say find your fit, I usually mean these four key areas, starting off with campus size and location. As you're going through your college search, you're gonna to wanna to answer some of these questions that you could take 8,000 campuses or colleges throughout the world and wind them down to the school of your dreams. So campus size, are you looking to attend a large campus or a, large, a small campus? Uh, location, are you looking to stay close to home or get as far away from mom and dad as physically possible. In the world of academics, that should be number one on every student's list. Uh, the school that you're looking at, if it's the right fit for you, should obviously have the academic program or an array of programs that interest you uh, so that you can graduate with a program that has a good fit. Student experiences, roughly 50% of the college experience happens outside of the classroom. Getting involved in clubs, sports, activities, so you want to make sure that you have a school or you attend a school that has those student experiences that match your interest. And last but certainly not least, cost and student aid. You may find the school of your dreams out there, but if you can't afford it at the end of the day or it's not a good financial fit, it may actually not be the right fit for you. So factoring all of these things in mind, again, you could take all the colleges and universities throughout the world and wind them down to about a dozen or less uh, schools that meet everything on your list in the school of your dreams. And I'm gonna talk about where Penn State falls in to all of these different areas. 
starting off with campus size and location. As I mentioned, Penn State is one university spread out throughout the state of Pennsylvania. So all of these little polka dots that you see on your screen represent Penn State campuses. And it doesn't matter which campus you start at or finish at or go to in between, you're still getting the Penn State experience and having the same opportunities. There are, however, three key differences between our campus locations. They are uh, size, cost, and location. In terms of size, our largest campus is University Park. It's in the center of the state. That one campus alone has roughly 40 to 50,000 students on any given year. So half of our enrollment is based off of one location. The other 19 campuses combined represent the other 50,000, with campuses ranging in size from maybe four or 5,000 students, like our Barron campus up by Lake Erie, Altoona, Harrisburg, Abington. These campuses have about three to 5,000 students. And then every other Penn State campus, Penn State Beaver included, has 1,000 students or less. So under one umbrella of a university, we have these different campus sizes for you. And there are advantages to every different campus from location, size, as well as cost. So in terms of location, Penn State has campuses near big cities like Penn State Beaver. We're located near the city of Pittsburgh, or we also have campuses near Philadelphia, or we have campuses like University Park that are a city in and of themselves. Fun fact about University Park is it grows to be the third largest city in Pennsylvania on football game days. It's crazy. Um, outside of that though, we have campuses that are uh, in little niche uh, markets all throughout the state of Pennsylvania. Um, and a quick fun fact as well, we were founded as an agricultural school back in the day, the Farmers High School of Pennsylvania. So there is supposed to be a Penn State campus close to home wherever people live in the state of Pennsylvania. That's why you don't see many campuses up north. It's because it's all Amish country and farmland. Yet around the big cities, we have a ton of campuses to choose from. The last two things I want to mention about this slide are the cost. So essentially, the larger the campus, the more expensive it is to attend there. So you could save yourself a ton of money by starting at a smaller campus like Penn State Beaver. And then the campuses that have the little yellow monopoly houses, that uh, designates campuses that have on-campus housing. I know that we have several out-of-state and international students on the chat today. Uh, so if you are looking to attend Penn State, I highly recommend attending a campus like Penn State Beaver with on-campus housing so that you can live on campus as a student. Uh, one last thing about that, if you're looking at other Penn State campuses, the Penn State's University Park and Barron campuses require students to live on campus as a freshman. All of the other campuses, you have the ability uh, to commute or live off campus. However, I strongly, strongly, strongly suggest if you are coming to Penn State as a freshman, living on campus is the smoothest and best way to get your start at Penn State. So talking a little bit more about Penn State Beaver in a nutshell, our average enrollment is roughly 650 students. So like I mentioned, it's less than 1,000, which means our class sizes are small. They average between 20 to 25 with our largest classes only going up to 50, maybe 60 students in our largest classes. What that means for you as a student is you get a lot of one-on-one -on -one attention. The faculty members, as Tiffany said, they will know who you are by name. They'll know your interests, they'll know your, your hopes, your dreams, your goals, and they'll be able to assist you in that. Instead of competing among hundreds, if not thousands of students at other universities or larger campuses, here at our campus, you have the ability to truly take advantage of this world-class academics uh, and get direct contact with your professors. Some other things that we pride ourselves on at Penn State Beaver, one is our diversity. We have students on our campus from 28 states and 10 countries all throughout the world. And uh, I'm looking at our enrollment numbers here for this upcoming fall. These numbers are going to increase because we have students from even farther and wider. Uh, what that means for you is you're gonna have a diverse experience, whether it's inside of the classroom or outside of the classroom, living in our residence halls. And I don't know about you, but diversity is an amazing thing. Uh, getting to meet and interact with people from all around the world from different backgrounds and cultures just makes uh, the experience that much more richer. Uh, you see the statistic on the bottom right, 25% of our students live on campus with the other 75% commuting from the local area. Uh, a lot of our students that live on campus are the out-of-state and international students. However, we have local students that live there as well. So if you're around campus, uh, you are more than welcome to live on campus. And the last thing that's not listed on this, this uh, slide here is we have a very strong athletic culture at Penn State Beaver. About one out of every five students on our campus is a student athlete. So if you're a student athlete on this chat, um, we have several members of our athletics department here today. Um, when it comes to the Q&A, we'd be happy to answer your questions there. So the next thing I want to talk about is navigating the Penn State system. So you can start and stay at any Penn State campus if the campus has your major. So you could start almost any Penn State major at any campus. If the campus you start at 
has your ending major, you could stay there all four years and get your Penn State degree. Or you have an option. You can also do two plus two, which is something very unique to Penn State. And what this allows you to do is to start practically any major at any Penn State campus. And after two years, you can transition to any Penn State campus that has your ending major. For instance, if you're looking to study mechanical engineering, that's a very popular program for students to start at Penn State Beaver, but we don't offer the last two years of that program. So after two years, you can transition to Penn State's University Park, Barron, uh, or even I believe it's Harrisburg campuses that have the mechanical engineering degree to complete that program. Now, after two years, when you're transitioning between campuses, note that I say transition, it's not a transfer. As long as you're taking the classes that your advisor lays out for you and you have decent grades, A's, B's, and the occasional C, you will seamlessly transition between the campuses that you start at and finish at. And it's your choice where you wanna finish at as long as the campus has your major. And it's a guaranteed process. About 50 to 60% of Penn State students will do the two plus two plan at some time throughout their college career. So it's a very common way through Penn State. Again, uh, you have the ability to do two plus two or you can finish all four years of at uh, the campus you started at. Doesn't matter how you navigate the system, you're still gonna have access to high quality academics, the vibrant student life and the opportunities uh, that Penn State has to offer. And like I said, we're one university, so the opportunities are essentially the same at every Penn State campus, but each campus also has their niche uh, opportunities and things that are very unique to that location. Um, so a student at Penn State Beaver can get season football tickets or season hockey tickets at our University Park location, or a student from Penn State Barron, our Erie campus, could take advantage of a speaker or presenter at Penn State Beaver. Uh, the list goes on and on and on. Just know, again, you have all of these options to tailor your education to your specific wants and needs. The next thing I wanna do is talk about academics. As I mentioned, we have 275 academic programs to choose from. Actually, it's over that number, which means you could study practically anything at Penn State. Uh, and we are well known for a lot of different areas. So what you see here are our academic areas and there's several majors scattered throughout each one of these areas. I'm gonna give a quick overview of some of the ones that are most popular or common, uh, and then we'll skip over to the programs that Penn State Beaver offers. So as I mentioned, we were founded as an agricultural school back in the day. Uh, we were the Farmers High School of Pennsylvania back in 1855. So at Penn State, we do agriculture exceptionally well. Uh, we have our own brand of Penn State grass that was designed at Penn State and is used all across the country and the globe. Uh, especially in golf courses. Um, we also, a fun story is we also have dairy cows on our University Park campuses, our campus, and we turn those cows produce milk that we turn into ice cream. We actually have an ice cream making course at Penn State. Uh, and believe it or not, Ben and Jerry learned how to make ice cream at Penn State University through our correspondence course. Uh, next on the list is arts and architecture. We're well known in bo uh, both of those fields. Um, the highlight for our architecture program is it's built into the curriculum that you have to study abroad. You have to spend a semester in Rome to study Roman architecture to graduate from that degree. In the world of uh, business, our Smeal College of Business is ranked up there with the Ivy Leagues and we're highly ranked and regarded in everything from management, marketing, supply chain, accounting, you name it, Penn State is very strong in the business world. And we actually have three business schools uh, throughout the university with our Smeal College of Business just being one of those. Um, speed round for the next two or three, uh, we have the largest college of communications in the entire country. Our Earth and Mineral Sciences program uh, has a Nobel Prize winner as a faculty member. In the world of engineering, that's Penn State's bread and butter. One out of every 50 engineers in America is a Penn State alum. One out of 50, it's amazing. Um, I also, I, I, I'm going down to Everly College of Science. Uh, one out of four meteorologists in America is a Penn State alum. And last but certainly not least, for the sake of time, I wanna talk about the Division of Undergraduate Studies. Uh, DUS, as we refer to it, is not only is it our most popular starting major, it's also our undecided option. Meaning for you, it's okay to not know exactly what you wanna study when you come to Penn State. If you come in undecided and you're part of our DUS program, you'll be assigned an advisor that knows information about every academic program that we offer. And then after about a year or two, maybe three or four semesters, you can declare your major uh, and, and go straight into it. Uh, you're still able to graduate in four years. And the beautiful thing is your, your freshman year in particular, you have the ability to explore options. And your advisor from, uh, for through Undecided is gonna know information about every academic program instead of just one area, as opposed to if you apply for a business school, your advisor is gonna know business like the back of their, their hand. But if you decide to change your major to engineering, they're not gonna be able to help you. You're gonna have to change advisors. 
So these are all of our academic areas, and I'm sure you have questions about this, so please ask them away in the chat. The next thing I want to talk about is the programs that you can complete in full at Penn State Beaver. Starting with administration of justice. AOJ, as we refer to it, is criminal justice just by a different name. And it's a very hands-on program. For example, uh, to graduate in our AOJ program, uh, at the end of junior, senior year, students have to do live action scenarios. So throughout the three, four years of the program, they learn different tips, tools, and tricks. And during their, their senior uh, classes, they have to do these live action scenarios. And I'm talking, things like live action shooter scenarios, domestic violence scenarios, where we will shut down half of our campus, we bring in the local police, uh, and then the local, uh, I think it's the medics, and, and even paid actors to act out these scenarios, whether it's a terroristic threat or, or a live action shooter scenario. And our students have to go in in this lifelike situation and dissolve the situation based off of what they learn. Now, it's unfortunate that we have to do that, but I will tell you, if you wanna get into the, the criminal justice field, um, this is giving you hands-on real-life experience in a controlled, safe environment. Um, I've witnessed this, this demonstration. It's uh, unbelievable how lifelike it is, but our students are graduating with experience so that they're prepared in the real world. Next is biology. It's one of our newer programs, and it's also one of our most popular. Our biology program is designed to be general. So whether you're looking just to do general biology and research, to plant biology, animal biology, human anatomy and physiology, or maybe you want to go down the pre-med route, our biology program is multifaceted and can get you a lot of different areas. Um, so if you want to go down the pre-medical route, uh, or if you want to do a heavy research, our biology program and our faculty are very uh, well known and good at that. Uh, the next thing I want to talk about is business. We actually have several business programs at Penn State Beaver. Um, as you see, accounting and management and marketing are very common, as well as I want to talk about health policy and administration. That's the business side of the health field, and it's also our newest program uh, at Penn State Beaver starting this upcoming fall. And then project and supply chain management. Uh, I like to explain that program is, if you ever uh, wondered how Amazon could get a package from Los Angeles, California to your front door in a day or two, uh, that's supply chain management. And uh, add on to that, the project side of things, it's a very popular program, it's an up and coming program. Um, if you're looking to study business, all of these options are there for you as well. Uh, in the world of communications, at Penn State Beaver, we offer corporate communications as well as digital journalism. So whether you want to be a writer, a news reporter, or a social media expert, we have several options for you uh, in that program. And it's required for not only our communications program, but also our business program, that you have to have an internship to graduate. Several of our programs, whether it's a requirement or it's strongly suggested, you have to have an internship to graduate, meaning, again, that you're getting real-world experience. The next program I'm gonna talk about is IST, Information Sciences and Technology. You may have never heard of this program before, but at its core, it's computer science and computer engineering, but it also ties in business and psychology. It's the study of how and why people use technology on a day-to-day -day basis. So solving problems with tech or, or creating new technology, that's what IST is all about. If you have any interest in, in those fields, uh, engineering, business, computers, psychology, uh, this program might really interests you. Um, the amazing statistic for IST is the average starting salary for IST grads is higher than our engineers. I believe it's somewhere in the $55,000, $60,000 range um, for IST grads. So it's, very, it's a very strong degree. And if I could go back to school, that's the program that I would choose personally. Last but certainly not least, psychology. Our psychology program at Penn State Beaver is, is phenomenal. Um, it's also very technologically driven. One of our professors, Dr. Kevin Bennett, um, he's doing a lot of research, and one of the research projects he's working on is uh, how people with schizophrenia are affected by augmented or virtual reality. So if you've ever used virtual reality or augmented reality headsets, you see things that aren't actually there. And people with schizophrenia, they also see things that aren't actually in front of them. So merging those two worlds together, uh, Dr. Bennett is studying this process because as time goes on in the future, augmented and virtual reality is going to become more and more prevalent and these people with schizophrenia are going to be using this technology. So we're seeing how they interact and how they could be best put forth uh, in the future. So that's a very uh, brief overview of all of our academic programs that you can complete in full at Penn State Beaver. If you're looking at any other programs, um, you have to start, uh, you can start them at Penn State Beaver, but you cannot finish them. You have to do our two plus two plan. One last thing I forgot to mention, I'm gonna go back one slide for a second, is our colleges of arts and architecture as well as nursing. 
Those are two colleges that require students to start and finish at certain Penn State campuses. Uh, and unfortunately, Penn State Beaver isn't one of them. If you're looking at our programs in arts and architecture, uh, probably the most uh, biggest campus that will have a lot of those programs is Penn State University Park. And in the world of nursing, there's a handful, maybe six, seven, or eight campuses that offer our four-year baccalaureate degree in nursing uh, that you have to start and finish at those campus locations. Again, Penn State Beaver isn't one of them. For nursing, some of the hot spots are University Park, Altoona, Barron, or Penn State Fayette on the western side of the state. So just be aware that those programs, you cannot start at Penn State Beaver, but any other program, about 250 uh, programs, you te definitely can start at our campus. So moving into undergraduate research very quickly, we are a tier one research institution. That's as high as you possibly can get in the world of research. And we have over $1 billion in research funding every year. So if you have the next idea for Facebook or the cure for cancer inside of your head, you can walk in as early as your freshman year, get paired with a professor and do undergraduate research. Um, what you see before you is we have uh, faculty, and faculty staff and students that are doing research on how climate change and global warming is affecting coral reefs. Essentially, as the globe warms up, coral reefs are dying out. And one of the core reasons why coral reefs uh, are there, one of the great benefits of them, is that they protect the mainland from harsh uh, waves and, and uh, ocean currents, which makes the continents shrink and smaller. So we're studying this, and we're trying to find ways to stop coral reefs from dying out and to protect them as the, the Earth go, uh, warms up. Um, so that's just one example. There are tons of examples of research, but for the sake of time, I want to move forward. Another big thing about college in Penn State is internships. Um, we have a ton of internship opportunities. Some programs, it's a requirement for you to graduate. Others, it's just strongly encouraged. Um, in internships, you could get them as early as your freshman year, and I highly recommend, I, I hope all of you on this presentation today come to Penn State, but I know that's not realistic. So if I can leave one word of advice for you. When you go to college, make sure that you get experience. Internships, co-ops, getting involved. If you are able to graduate with two or three years of experience under your belt and a degree, that separates you from every other student that just has a degree. So internships are huge at Penn State. We actually have the top ranked career services office in the entire country uh, when it comes to college career services offices. Um, and we have the largest job fair on the East Coast of the United States twice a year at Penn State University Park. So when it comes to internships and finding jobs, we have a lot of opportunities for you. What you see before you is Nicholas Polino. He's one of our recent graduates from Penn State Beaver. Uh, Nicholas, grow, growing up, Nick's dream was to work at Disney. Uh, he always loved it growing up. So when it came time to get his internship, he applied for Disney's internship program and he got the internship. Uh, and he actually interned there, I believe, back to back uh, terms. He was there for a long time. I uh, actually had the privilege of going down to see him while he was interning down there. And when Nick graduated, he applied for a full-time job at Disney. And since he worked there and they knew him and he knew them, he landed that job. So I'm very proud to say uh, that Nick landed the job at Disney and has been working there ever since. I'm not sure exactly where he's at right now with uh, how everything's going with the, the quarantine, um, but I'm sure that he'll be back at the happiest place on earth very soon, um, as soon as possible. So you heard earlier uh, from Ms. McQuarrie about study abroad and Katie Work. Well, this is a picture. Uh, these are pictures of Katie Work and her study abroad experience. At Penn State, we actually have over 300 study abroad options that allow you to go abroad for as little as a week, a month, a semester, or even an entire year abroad. And when you're studying abroad, you could take Penn State classes that credits towards your education, so you're not wasting any time. There's a lot of grant aid available for you to study abroad to keep the cost down. And probably the most uh, amazing thing is if you're an out-of-state student and you study abroad, you are going to be paying in-state tuition costs when you're abroad. So you can save yourself money by taking advantage of this opportunity. Um, the amazing thing about Katie's experience is, yes, she studied abroad. She had an amazing experience overseas. But when she came back, she was also applying for jobs at our career, uh, career college and career fair. Uh, and when she applied, she applied to Amazon. And Amazon reached back out to her really quick after she applied and offered her a job, a huge job as a uh, distribution manager at one of their facilities in the eastern part of Pennsylvania. And the thing that separated Katie from all of these other applicants was her study abroad, was her worldly experience. So she was able to turn her study abroad experience into a full-time job. And last thing I checked, Katie's gotten a couple uh, raises and promotions since she uh, graduated uh, last year. 
and she's doing really well for herself. So study abroad is huge at Penn State. I highly recommend looking into that. Um, and again, you could go for as little as a week or two uh, through a extended spring break or over a summer trip. Or if you want to spend a semester or a year abroad, uh, you can go everywhere from London to Germany to even Antarctica and study abroad. So it's very common. Next thing I want to talk about is athletics. At Penn State Beaver, we've had decades of success in the athletic realm, winning several championships, uh, both at our, our PSUAC conference level and USCAA. So the PSUAC stands for the Penn State University Athletic Conference, and it's the conference that we play out of. It's where Penn State Beaver plays other Penn State campuses, about 15 other campuses, 14 or 15. And if you win the state of Pennsylvania, we're also members of what you see on the, the middle of the screen there, the USCAA, which stands for the United States Collegiate Athletic Association. This is a national uh, affiliation, a national association, very similar to the NCAA. So if you win, if Penn State wins, the, uh, Penn State Beaver wins the state of Pennsylvania, we're going to go on and play schools all across the country uh, from Maine uh, to Florida to California and everywhere in between and complete on a national level. Um, again, we've seen a lot of success both at the USCAA and PSUAC levels. I'm very proud to announce that back in 2014, our women's basketball team became the first team in Penn State history to ever win a USCAA title, and they won the USCAA uh, Women's Basketball Championship. And I'm also proud to announce that they, uh, they won their second championship probably two, two months ago at this point. Uh, they were the, the victors this year as well for a national title. Um, the sports that we offer at Penn State Beaver, we offer men's and women's basketball, men's and women's soccer, baseball, softball, volleyball, and then my personal favorite is club hockey as well. So not only do we have varsity sports, we also have club sports uh, and tons of intramurals to choose from at Penn State Beaver. Uh, in the world of club sports, we've had a lot of success with our, our club hockey team as well, winning several championships over the past couple of years. Um, if you are looking at other campuses outside of Penn State Beaver, Penn State's University Park campus is NCAA Division I. It's as, high as, high, as high as you possibly can get in the world of uh, college athletics. And then some of our other campuses, like Penn State Barron, uh, are NCAA Division III. So it depends on the Penn State campus that you're at for what level of ath uh, athletics that each campus has. Uh, but we're here today to answer any questions that you have at the end of the presentation. Moving on, maybe you're not an athlete, but you still want to get involved. At Penn State, we have 1,200 clubs and activities university-wide. Pretty much anything for everyone, um, from a chicken wing eating club to a Harry Potter Quidditch team. Um, Penn State's crazy enough. We actually have a club for people named Bob. If your name is Bob, there is a club for you at Penn State. Um, and we're all inclusive, so there's actually a club for people not named Bob at Penn State, uh, meaning there is instantly a club for absolutely everyone um, based off of that fact alone. Every club at Penn State gets thousands of dollars to be a club or organization and to hold events and activities. So if you have an interest or if you really want to get involved in something, now's the time to do it when you're in college because there's a lot of great resources available for you. You could start a club fairly easily with uh, as long as you have seven other students with the same interest, you could start an organization and request funding for your club. What you see before you though is a picture of THON or Dance Marathon. And uh, Ms. McCurry mentioned this earlier that our, our dance marathon is the largest student run philanthropy in the world. It's the largest student organization in the world. And it's a 46 hour dance marathon. It's also the largest dance party on the East coast of the United States. Um, and, but Thon is more than just a dance party. It's a year long effort to raise money to fight pediatric cancer. But if you see these students on the ground that are dancing, they're on their feet for 46 hours straight, raising money for cancer research. And during these 46 hours, probably the most amazing fact is we have these children with cancer, these, these, uh, these kids come and they use Thon as a breakaway from the reality. It's an opportunity for them to feel normal and, and, and feel good. It's an it's excitement. It's a celebration for these children. Um, we use the acronym FTK for the kids to represent that. But during these 46 hours, you bring in national music acts, uh, performers and dancers and it's again, this huge, amazing experience. And I'm very proud to announce that each year, our students, freshmen to senior students, raise millions upon millions of dollars for cancer research. I think this past year alone, it was $12 million from students raising money um, for the cause. And all of that money goes directly to the Four Diamonds Fund that you see up there in the, the shape of the lights. Um, and it's an amazing experience. Since the fund was uh, originated, 
Justin, your your Justin, your audio went out. Oh no! Can you hear me now? Yep. All right. Sorry about that. <laughs> but yes, Thon is a very common program, and you could start Thon at any Penn State campus. So shifting gears, let's talk about the application process. When you're applying to Penn State, you can actually apply three different ways: through admissions.psu.edu, through the coalition application, or the common application. Where we have three separate applications. They all go to the same place and there's not a lot of differences between them. However, I strongly encourage you to use our traditional homegrown application at admissions.psu.edu because if you do uh, and you talk to us before you apply, we can explain how to have your $65 application fee waived, but you have to apply through admissions.psu.edu. When you apply, we need three things from you. The application itself, uh, as well as your self-reported academic record, which takes place of your high school, uh, high school transcripts. I'll explain that in a minute. And then your SAT or ACT scores. Once we receive your application, your SRAR as we refer to it, and then your test scores, we will have everything that we need to evaluate you for admission. So let's talk a little bit more about the SRAR. Uh, SRAR again stands for self-reported academic record. And it's when you self-report what you've taken and done in, in high school. So you're going to need a copy of your high school transcript, and you're going to data enter your transcript information into an online form. Um, this is going to require you to list every class that you've taken in high school and the grades that you've received in high school. And you're going to be self-reporting this. So you don't need to send high school transcripts uh, to Penn State when you're applying. However, if you decide to attend Penn State, if you accept your offer and decide to attend, we will require a final high school transcript that we will use for graduation verification and to see, uh, to match up all the classes that you said you've taken and the grades that you received. When you're filling out the SRAR, you wanna take a carbon copy of exactly what's on that transcript into the online form. So the grade should come over exactly that way. Um, you're gonna include your cumulative GPA. You also wanna include your class rank and the academic rigor of the classes that you've taken. If weighted GPA is provided, you wanna include that on there. When we're evaluating you, Two thirds of our admissions decision is based off of your high school record, grades nine through 11. Um, so that's the bulk of our admissions decision. We do, however, wanna see your senior year schedule to see the classes that you've taken. Um, I highly encourage you, challenge yourself all the way through your senior year. Um, even though we're not really gonna be looking at your senior year grade wise, um, making sure that you're challenging yourself and taking high level classes is really in your best interest. You see math level there. So at a minimum, every student applying to Penn State needs to have taken two years of algebra and one year of geometry. And if you're looking to apply for any major that's science, engineering, or business-based, uh, or even technology-based, we also require a half year of trig, pre-calc, or higher. Um, so if you've taken up to tr uh, high school trigonometry or calculus, um, or, or even pre-calc, you're in really good shape for all of our majors. But if you don't have those requirements, if you haven't taken trig, pre-calc, or higher, um, you will either want to look for a non-science, a non-math major, uh, or you could apply undecided and then get into a science-based major uh, after two years once you've completed that trigonometry requirement. Um, also on there, we do account uh, academic rigor. So if you've taken AP credits or AP classes, we'll factor that in, and we do accept AP exams. Same with IB and honors courses. We accept all of those as well. The other one-third of our decision is based off of your standardized test scores the SAT or the ACT. We accept either exam, and there really is no difference between the exams. Uh, we accept them and weight them equally. We do want your scores sent officially from the, the college, uh, te the testing service. So whether it's the college board for the SAT or the ACT website for the ACT, and you can find Penn State's code on there to send them to us. Um, something unique to Penn State is that we do not super score. So some colleges and universities will take your highest math score and your highest reading score from every testing date you take in the SAT to create a super score. At Penn State, we don't do that. We actually use your highest combined score from a single testing date. So if you've taken the SAT multiple times, we're gonna use your highest score from a single testing date. Um, also at the bottom, SAT subject tests are not required. Now, I do wanna briefly mention about the SAT and the ACT uh, moving into this upcoming fall because of what's going on now, the test is, tests aren't available. And I know many of you haven't been able to take the SAT or the ACT. So we've heard from the SAT service that they're going to have several testing dates available in the fall from September all the way through December every month. Um, so if you haven't been able to take one of these exams yet, you should have that opportunity come the fall. The SAT has also mentioned that if students are unable to take classes uh, in person, or sorry, take the test in person, 
they may have the option of taking it virtually and they're working on virtual options for you as well. As of this current point in time, we are still going to require SAT or ACT scores for students applying to Penn State for fall 2021. Now, two thirds of our decision is based off your high school record. The other one third is based off your standardized test scores. What that means for you is when you apply to Penn State, we don't require letters of recommendation and there is no formal essay when you apply. There are, however, uh, options for you to put a personal statement and an activities list. The personal statement is anything that your application doesn't tell us about you, so extra information. Uh, and then your activities list is a list of activities that you've done in high school. We usually give that information to our student affairs office to help get you involved uh, once you're a Penn State student. But there is no formal essay required whenever you apply to Penn State. And the application itself takes about 20 to 30 minutes. The self-reported record uh, takes about 20 to 30 minutes. You can apply to Penn State in full in less than an hour, uh, realistically. So estimating your eligibility. When you're applying to Penn State and you're looking at these numbers, um, I don't want them to scare you or fool you. What you see before you is our middle 50%, meaning 25% of our, our applicants uh, scored below these ranges and 25% scored higher last year. If you're in these ranges, you have a solid shot of being admitted to Penn State, but it's not a guarantee. The best thing you could do for yourself is apply early. And I have a timeline that I'll show you next slide uh, to, uh, to show you that. But last thing about this is that Penn State University Park, the criteria is a little bit more higher than all of our other campuses just because it's more competitive. More students apply to that campus uh, than any of our other campuses. Uh, so a 3.5 GPA or, or, is high, or higher is average at University Park, a 3.0 or higher at all other campuses like Penn State Beaver. And you could read down the list uh, for the averages for SAT and ACT. Um, please know we don't have specific cutoffs at Penn State. So if you're in these ranges, it's great. If you're below these ranges, you could still be admitted to Penn State. Um, please apply uh, and get us all of your information and we will evaluate you and come up with a plan if necessary to get you in. Um, but just to give you an idea of what we typically look for. So here's that enrollment timeline that I was telling you about. If you are a high school junior now and you're gonna be a senior next year, uh, or senior this upcoming fall, you could start the application as early as August 1st of this year. Um, when you start the application, uh, we recommend that you complete the application between the August 1st and November 30th. That's our early action, sorry, our, our priority uh, application date. But we also have early action, which occurs on November 1st. If you're able to submit all of your materials and you select early action on our application um, and you complete before November 1, you are guaranteed an admissions decision before December 24th. However, if you apply before November 30th and get us everything in before that date, you're gonna uh, receive an admissions decision at the latest at the end of January. Now here's the thing, if you apply to Penn State Beaver specifically, you may actually have an admissions decision as early as maybe two, three, four, uh, four weeks after you apply. Um, so typically admissions decisions don't go out until October, um, but after that timeline, it's as, as quickly as maybe two, one or two weeks after you apply, you may get an admissions decision. But if you're applying to a larger campus, particularly University Park, it could take several weeks, if not months, to hear back from us with a decision. So don't be surprised that it does take a while. Um, something I forgot to mention in an earlier slide is when you apply to Penn State, you have the ability to put down your first choice campus and a second choice campus, an alternate choice campus. We will always evaluate you for whatever you put down as your first choice campus first. So if that's Penn State Beaver, you'll get evaluated for that campus. Uh, if you, for some reason, aren't admissible to your first choice campus, we will automatically reevaluate you for whatever you put down as your second choice. This is the point where I want to tell you, if you want to start Penn State University Park, if you have any interest in starting at Penn State University Park, make sure you put that down as your first choice campus. Um, and then we will automatically reevaluate you for a second choice if you're not admissible. I say that because our criteria for that campus is higher than all of our other locations. If you were to do that the opposite way, uh, apply to Penn State Beaver and be admissible, um, there's not a guarantee that you'll be admissible to University Park, so you will have to be reevaluated. Whereas if you have an offer from University Park, uh, we, can re uh, we can instantly change your offer to a smaller campus if necessary. I'm getting into the weeds, but just know when you apply to Penn State, you have the ability to apply and put your first choice and second choice campus. However, you will only have an uh, admissions decision from one campus at a time. You cannot have a decision to multiple campuses as you go on. Turning it over, I want to talk about the cost and then student aid. 
So what you see before you is tuition and fees for in-state students, uh, Pennsylvania residents. If you're looking at University Park, tuition for one year is 18,500. At Penn State Beaver and a lot of our other campuses, it averages between 13,500 all the way upwards of 14 or 15,000. Um, and again, that's tuition and fees for one year. If you're commuting back and forth from home, that's the only thing that we're gonna bill you for. Uh, however, if you wanna live on campus or you have to live on campus, um, housing is another $11,500. So what you see at the bottom there is you can save over $30,000 uh, if you're an in-state student by starting at a campus close to home. If you're at Penn State Beaver and you are able to commute back and forth uh, to campus, you're saving roughly $30,000 just for the first two years of being able to do uh, attend Penn State Beaver. If you stay all four years, you're saving $60,000 at a minimum for the same diploma at the end of the day. Um, so that's significant cost savings available for you. The next thing is for out-of-state costs, because I know we have several out-of-staters on the call. So at University Park, out-of-state tuition for one year is $35,000. At Penn State Beaver, it's roughly $22,000. Similar to uh, uh, in-state students, room and board is still $11,500, meaning out-of-state students at a minimum will save $25,000 for the first two years and almost $50,000 for the second two years um, if they uh, decide to stay at Penn State Beaver in full just because of the tuition difference. On top of the tuition difference, there's also a lot of different scholarship opportunities. So when it comes to financial aid, we use the FAFSA, the Free Application for Federal Student Aid, as our application for financial aid. And you can learn more and apply for the FAFSA at fafsa.ed.gov. When you apply with the, for the FAFSA, you're going to need your parents' tax information, and the FAFSA will set you up for four different types of aid. So student loans, that's money that you ultimately will have to pay back, but student loans are there as an investment into your education. Um, while you try to avoid student loans if possible, most students, uh, myself included, had to take out student loans to go to college. It's okay, but just be aware that this is money that you do have to pay back after graduation. Um, so it's not like it's a free free ride or free money. On the flip side, scholarships and grants, those are uh, free sources of, of aid. Um, scholarships typically come from the university or outside sources, and grants will be based off of uh, the state or the government and are mainly based off of financial need. You want as many scholarships and grants as you can get your hands on. Um, based off of the FAFSA, we will automatically award you scholarships that you're eligible for. So you do not need to apply for additional scholarships at Penn State However, there are not a ton, but some extra scholarships available that do require applications. If you go to, on the next slide, I'm gonna show you a website. You go to that website, you can learn more about those specific scholarships that you have to apply for. But the vast majority of the scholarships and aid at Penn State is automatically awarded based off of the FAFSA. Last but certainly not least is work study. That is when you work on campus and you get paid to work on campus. So if you're working uh, at the front desk of our gymnasium and uh, wellness center, uh, you're checking people in and out. If there's no one to check in and out and there's no extra work for you to do, they may say that you could do your homework and you're getting essentially paid to do your homework uh, there. So that's work study in a nutshell and it's awarded based upon um, your FAFSA. There's also a lot of options to uh, work on campus as well. So similar to our admissions timeline, here's our student aid timeline. Um, for incoming or upcoming seniors that are eligible to apply, uh, the FAFSA becomes available October 1st. We recommend that you complete the FAFSA by December 1 because we'll start awarding, uh, doing financial, patch, financial aid packaging um, in the, the, the spring. And mid-February is when early aid awarding begins. So by mid-February, you should have your financial aid package. And if you can picture this with me, up, uh, seniors that are gonna be applying, you wanna apply early. So August, you start applying, you get your materials in in September and October, uh, and you have an admission decision, hopefully by October, November. You will also, during this time, complete the FAFSA, and you'll get your financial aid package in mid-February. You have between then February and May to take a look at all of the colleges you've applied to. You have these offers of admission and your financial aid package packages, and then you, you essentially pick the school that's the best fit for you. But you want to make sure that you accept an offer of admission or make your decision before May 1st on a typical uh, year, because May, May 1 is National Decision Day. Uh, where all these colleges and universities that use this date, um, you have to accept before that date. Otherwise, they may pull your offer of admission or may pull your, your, your financial aid award, your scholarship. So it's very important to stick to that date. Um, this current point in time, we've, we have some options of, of that's a, it's a soft date instead of a hard date. But moving forward, 
Uh, next year, I do expect that to be a hard date. Um, at the bottom of the screen, you see studentaid.psu.edu. That's that website that I was telling you about. It's a great resource to learn more about student aid at Penn State as well as other scholarships that you might be eligible for. You can also look on our, cam our, our campus website for additional scholarships that you may be eligible for. Last but not least, uh, two words of, uh, of advice when it comes to scholarships. Uh, our student aid Facebook and Instagram and Twitter accounts post vetted scholarships every day uh, for Penn State. So vetted scholarships that are guaranteed to come into Penn State. So if you are on social media, make sure you follow Penn State student aid accounts and you could see and apply for scholarships that they post. Also, my other word of advice, when looking for scholarships, you want to apply for as many as you physically can get your hands on, um, but my recommendation is apply for the smaller scholarships. Everybody and their brother will apply for the $500,000 Coca-Cola award, um, but one or two or three students get that every year. You are more likely to get smaller scholarship awards. So if it's $1,000 or less, um, most students skip over it. They don't think it's worth their time, but I could tell you, those are the awards that very few students apply for. So if you have decent grades, de decent GPA, and you're involved, um, you have the ability to clean house and get a lot of those smaller awards, which really does add up. So next, I want to talk about the value of a Penn State education. There's a lot of amazing schools out there, and every single one's going to tell you that they're amazing. And, and we are no different than that. However, these are some of the things that we're very proud about uh, at Penn State. I've mentioned a few of them already from our top ranked career services office. Um, when it comes to career services at Penn State, our career services office will help you with resume writing. They'll help you with interview skills by doing mock interviews. Um, they will even go as far as taking your LinkedIn headshot profile photos. So that when you graduate, you have a, a professional look to your LinkedIn profile. And we have something called the career closet. That is a, a collection of professional attire that our students can check in and check out so that they can uh, look the part whenever they're going on these interviews, especially if they can't afford it. So our career services office is phenomenal. Um, the next two things here, uh, the co collegiate career fair. Uh, whenever I'm talking this career fair, there are a ton of opportunities, uh, about 300, 400 uh, employers a year, uh, sorry, sorry, a semester come to Penn State just to hire our students for jobs and internships. So that's an area where students could walk in on, on, in the morning, go meet with people, have an interview in the afternoon, and actually have a job waiting for them in that evening. Um, I won't say that's common, but it has been done before uh, if students are that uh, highly sought after. Um, the other thing that makes Penn State unique is our alumni association. We have the largest dues-paying alumni association in the world. And if you could wrap your mind around this, the statistic of one out of every 117 Americans with a college degree is a Penn State alum. Um, Think about it this way. If you get on an airplane anywhere in the globe or anywhere in the country, chances are there's one, two, maybe three other Penn Staters on that airplane at any given time, if you think about it that way. Um, between you and I, that means you have your foot in the door almost anywhere that you want to work. And Penn Staters love nothing more than to hire other Penn Staters and support other Penn Staters. So our alumni network uh, really is a, a big piece of the Penn State picture. It means that you're connected for life, even beyond graduation. Penn Staters are there to support you. And you also have access to our career services office well after graduation um, as a resource as well. The last thing I want to talk about for the presentation is dual enrollment, um, especially if you are a local student in, uh, in and around Penn State Beaver, dual enrollment is a great option for you. Um, it gives you the ability as a junior, you can take a class each semester uh, that we offer in the fall and the spring uh, at a discounted tuition rate. Uh, and it gives you the ability to, to experience college coursework while you're still in high school. Seniors have the ability to take up to two classes, or I believe it's eight credits uh, a semester in the fall and the spring, and you're earning Penn State credit or college credit while you're still in high school at a discounted rate. Um, some students that have taken advantage of these opportunities have really, they've even shaved off maybe a semester or maybe more uh, of their, their college time um, by taking these classes while in high school. If you're interested in dual enrollment, um, please let us know in the chat and our Director of Enrollment, Dan Pinshot, will be able to talk to you more about those opportunities for you. So 